Hey, what's up guys? Hope everybody's doing very well. Now I'm pretty sure many fellow guitarists recognize this issue when you start working with your tone control of your guitar. I mean, to some extent you can actually create a thicker sound by slightly rolling off some of the high frequencies up there. This works very well, especially with single coil guitars. But uh, once you start rolling down your tone control completely, especially with humbucker guitars, you're just creating this super dull and muddy sound with little to no definition. And the transients that you worked so hard for are basically gone, right? What do you mean? What do you mean? Gone. Now this issue, so to say, if you call it an issue, uh, is actually a little bit worse with the modern wiring versus the 50s wiring. Now this uh, so-called modern wiring already existed in the 50s as well, though it's a little bit less common. It's just a way of doing things a little bit differently to provide a, a little bit of basic noise control and to sort of compensate for uh, the materials in the components used uh, at the time. Now, still many guitarists, like ourselves, many purists, guitarists, prefer this 50s style wiring in their guitars because it gives the guitar a slightly fresher tone, so to say. Uh, and because the tone control sits at the output of the volume control, it also interferes a little bit less with the signal when not engaged. Now, because flipping the circuit between 50 style wiring and modern style wiring is such an easy modification, you can easily do this yourself, I guess, with some basic soldering skills to experiment with the differences in tone. Now, many modern guitars come with 50s wiring style. Now, the tone control that sits in our guitars is by design essentially a filter that filters off a lot or almost all of the high frequencies that our guitar tone provides. To be more exact, it actually creates a split where a portion of the tone, the high frequency portion, gets shunt off the ground by showing a quicker way to ground because electricity just chooses the quickest way out there. We'd love to stand around and chat, but we gotta sit down in the lobby and wait for a little Now, this crossover point or the frequency point from where this happens depends on the value of the tone capacitor in your circuit. Now, here's briefly how that all works. This diagram shows it in a way that's easy to understand, hopefully. So you play your string above the pickup and the string vibrates. Now, there's a magnetic field. Now, this magnetic field consists of both the pickup and the string itself. That string itself is magnetized by the pickup. And this uh, static magnetic field uh, changes when you play your string because there's then a vibration. And this vibration up and down in the magnetic field over the pickup's coil lets the pickup produce a alternating electrical signal. And that is your tone. Now, electricity, I mentioned before, doesn't have time to sit and chat. It just uh, simply chooses the quickest way out of there. So a part of your tone, and which part that is, is determined by the value of your tone capacitor, gets shunt off the ground if you roll down your tone control and therefore engaging or providing this alternate path. Now, in the situation where you will be able to use a tone control in a more linear fashion, where it would literally be a shelf EQ that filters off high frequencies of guitar tone, that would be cool. But in the practical guitar world and the guitar world of rock and roll, it just doesn't work like that, I guess. I mean, uh, with the way a balanced guitar tone or a desirable guitar tone gets dialed in to begin with, then of course we have all the interactions with harmonic distortions from amplifier circuits and pedals and whatnot, and of course playing style. So I think the tone controller that sits in our guitars is a beautiful and underrated piece of electronics right there. But unfortunately, the rolled, completely rolled off function is just a little bit too rolled off usually, and therefore unusable with its stock value capacitor. Unless we can get ourselves a pretty interesting tone control by uh, lowering the value of the tone capacitor, seriously lowering it by half, 50%. And this uh, creates a very different roll-off and especially the fully rolled off function gives it a very cool raw and resonant voice. You will just hear it in this experiment by I uh, change around some capacitors and you can see a couple of playing examples with the stock value 0.022 microfarad and a 0.01 or 11 microfarad. Here it goes.
So like this, you would still have that sweet, round, full sound, aka the woman's tone that Clapton and Santana made famous. But I found that half the value makes it much more usable as a high frequency filter and it keeps your transients alive. <laughs> This funny raw resonant voice I think is a free byproduct you get with uh, the modification done and I think with the modification done uh, you'll be more likely to use tone control more and to begin with because it sits at a little bit a more musical place in the EQ spectrum. I do this to most of my uh, I do this to most of my guitars including the Telecaster but bear in mind Telecaster is a little bit different and you can actually go 10% of the value I think it's 5000 picofarad that sits in, uh, in it now. Of course, it's up to you to experiment with different value capacitors and different materials as well. So please let me know in the comments if you use different capacitors in your Gibson style guitars or maybe single coil guitars. It'll be interesting to see. I'm going to sign this one off now. So please take care. Hopefully this was of any use to you. Behave. I'll see you other soon.